Hey there guys, this is Mr. Herbst here and today my focus is going to be on natural selection. Now right up here, you may have seen this phrase before, survival of the fittest. I don't really like that phrase all that much. And it really is because of this word right here, fittest. What does it mean to be the fittest organism that you can be? Well, this person over here is doing yoga. Uh, that person is obviously a lot more fit than me. But what does it mean to be fit? I mean, it's tough to understand because us as human beings think that fitness means the ability to live in a healthy, long life. The ability to be strong. But is it really about strength? Look at this shark down here. This shark and this grizzly bear are one of the strongest, you know, toughest organisms that are around on planet Earth. Does that mean that they are fit? What does it mean to be fit? And take a look at these jellyfish over here. They're certainly not big and strong, but are they fit? I mean, they have the ability to kill people. Those box jellyfish uh, that live out in Australia can kill some people in minutes. And what about bacteria? They have been around... The fossil record shows that they have been around for probably the longest out of any organism on Earth. That means they've been around for a really long time. So they are not big organisms. They're not strong organisms. But does that mean that they're fit just because they've been around a long time? So what I'm here to tell you here, guys, is that fitness, according to evolutionary biology, is all about reproductive success. And sometimes, you know, we shorten it down and we talk about fitness is the is survival, the ability to survive, plus all the babies that an organism can produce. So if we take a look over here, you know, it, if we look at these little cute organisms I have here, all of these guys here are successful because they had a baby. This, uh, this otter over here is, whole, is kind of presenting its baby showing it showing the world hey i have an awesome baby here um well those organisms are they have a fitness and now if they have another baby in their lifetime their fitness will go even higher if they have another baby in their lifetime their fitness will go even higher if this pig by the end of its life has a hundred babies it had a really high fitness rate as compared to another pig that only had one baby so really, ultimately, you guys, it's all about producing babies and passing along those genes into the next generation. Now, sometimes reaching that age to even be reproductive is hard. It's actually, when you think about it, it's hard for life. It's hard for organisms to even reach reproductive age. So if we take a look over here, for example, like at these sea turtles, the second that they hatch, do they have the ability to reproduce? Can this... Brand new baby born sea turtle reproduce? I mean, the answer is no, it can't. It's going to have to grow up, mature, and reach reproductive age. And now the chances of, of that actually happening statistically is pretty small. To put it in perspective here, guys, uh, I don't know how many sea turtles there are in this picture, maybe 100. Uh, if about 10% of those 100 actually go on to actually reach reproductive age, that's a lot. I'm, so what I'm saying is, the vast majority of those organisms are going to die, either by predation or by uh, storms or, or even maybe possibly even human beings. Who knows? But what I'm saying is um, reaching reproductive age is hard. But however, something about those that do reach reproductive age have better genes. I put better in quotes because what does better mean? Well, it would all depend on the species. Maybe these sea turtles can swim slightly faster than their neighbors, and their neighbors are going to get eaten by sharks. Maybe it's that these sea turtles can blend into their environment a little bit better. Whatever it is, whatever allowed them to reach reproductive age is what allowed them to pass along those genes that were better for their survival into the next generation. And so that is sort of the basis about natural selection. Natural selection is all about the environment. Environmental pressures favor, and again I put favor in, in quotes, um, all the environmental pressures favor certain traits. So if we consider, um, you know, right up here, the, this, this environment, this, uh, this frozen wasteland it looks like, what sort of organisms live there? Polar bears, seals, killer whales, penguins, stuff like that. What do all those have in common? 
Well, they're all well adapted to be able to live in those cold climates. They all have blubber. They all have things like this. So there was a pressure to adapt the, the blubber and the, the thick fur and all of those things that allow them to live in those cold climates. Let's take a look at some small scale uh, natural selection. Let's take a look over here. This here is some moths living on a tree. If this bird was going to go off and eat some moss, which they do, they love moss. Moss tastes amazing to them. But which one do you think the bird is most likely going to see? Hopefully you can kind of tell that the bird is most likely going to be able to see this moth right here. This one sort of blends in a little bit. So the environment in which these moths live is providing pressures. More specifically, the bird is providing pressures on the moths to even survive. The ones that don't have the good genes or the genes to blend in are going to die. They're going to get eaten by those birds. Now, what if for some reason the environment changes? And what if instead of those moths living on a white tree, what if suddenly that tree becomes black like this right over here? Well, now what? Now, which ones do you think the birds are going to be able to see easier? Hopefully, you can see now the ones that used to be able to blend in now stand out. It's all about what's going on in the environment. So now, in this case, the black ones are going to survive. Anyway, guys, to sum up natural selection, and this is where natural selection sort of takes a, uh, uh, a bit more of a dive and to become a little bit more complicated to understand. Natural selection requires four principles in order to work. So what I'm telling you here, guys, is if they're in a population, if these four things were not there, natural selection would not exist. So let's go into those four things. The first thing is that we need to have some variation within a population. So if we look over here at these monkeys, there's variation. Not everyone is the same, right? There's some small ones. There's some big ones. There's some different colored ones. Some have, are darker beards. Some have lighter beards. And then also, in order for natural selection to work, traits must be heritable. So if we look at this big guy right here, this big behemoth of a, of a monkey, why do you think he's so big? How did he get his genes to be big? Well, he definitely got them from his parents. So his traits are heritable. He inherited his traits from his parents. And then we also need to see that there is a struggle for resources. And let me ask you, do you think it's logical to believe that these, re these monkeys here have an unlimited amount of food and an unlimited amount of living space? No. They certainly have to struggle over those things. And you know what? They probably struggle over even more than just space and food? Mates. And finally, the last thing that natural selection needs in order to work is there has to be an overproduction of offspring. So to put that another way, guys, is that there has to be more offspring produced by the population than capable of surviving. If we go back to the sea turtles, for example, about 10%, or, or, or put another way, 90% of all of those sea turtles are going to die. There is a vast overproduction of offspring. Now, it's a little bit different, though, when we talk about monkeys, because monkeys will generally produce one offspring, and they'll take care of it. Turtles don't take care of their babies. Turtles will just say, here you go, world. Do the best you can do. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you also complete the Google form in the uh, description below. This is Mr. Herbst here. I'm signing off. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.